Oh my god. Hello, how are you? This is the first video I am filming with my new hair bitch. And let me tell you, I feel like a different fucking person. I am obsessed with that. I am obsessed. I'm addicted. I cannot wait to book in another hair appointment in like six weeks and get it even brighter and more blonde. So yeah, you guys that don't follow me on social media, as in like Instagram and stuff like that, wouldn't have seen this. But yeah, this is my new hair. We've got some foils. My natural hair color is still at the root. And then yeah, it kind of ombres into the blonde. It is a vibe and you cannot tell me otherwise. I feel like a boss ass bitch. I feel so attractive and the compliments I've been getting. Yes, sir. I do enjoy them. I do enjoy a little bit of an ego boost. I do enjoy people appreciating me. So you guys clicked on the video. So you already know what today's video is going to be all about. I'm going to be doing my February reading wrap up. So we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in February, my thoughts and my opinions on them. Honestly, February was an amazing month for me with reading. It wasn't good because I read a lot. It was good because I found some of the best books I've ever fucking read. And that's what I'm here for. I don't care about challenges. I don't care about trying to read as many books as I can. At the start of the year, I was like, oh my God, like I need to read more. I need to read as many books as I possibly can. But then I was like, no, that takes away the fun of reading. It takes away the whole enjoyment of reading. It starts to feel like a chore like that. So I'm not trying to read a billion books in one month. I'm trying to find good books. So sometimes I will have months where I've read over 10 books. Some months I'll probably only read like four. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited to do this video. I don't know if I'm going to name it my reading wrap up just because I don't get as many views when I call it a reading wrap up. So I might just say like my steamy recommendations or something like that because I do recommend everything I read. Honestly, everything I read, I fucking recommend. Okay, so without further ado, bitch, let's get into the steam-worthy romances. The romances that fuck with me, okay? The first book I read in February was The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan. So the reason why I read this book was because I read Between Us last month, which was an age gap relationship between a younger man and an older woman, and I fucking loved it. So a lot of people have recommended Pool Boy to me by Nikki Sloan, uh, but I postponed it, put it on the back burner because I'm not a person that's into the whole older woman, younger guy until I read Between Us last month. Anyway, I read Nikki Sloan before. Her book, The Doctor, is amazing. I'm pretty sure it's a part of this series. The Pool Boy. Bitch, Nikki is fucking steamy, hun. She knows how to get the shit going and going there good, okay? She knows how to write really dirty but really erotic and like beautiful sex scenes, I may just say myself. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed the whole plot of the book as well. So it's about this girl who, well, I should say it's about this woman who works for like a record company in Texas. Is it Texas? I'm unsure. Can't remember. Uh, and she is a manager for up and coming artists. And she has this best friend who has a son who is Oh, it's the early 20s or 18, I can't remember. Uh, and he is her pool boy. She ends up divorcing her husband because her husband was actually cheating on her with another man. First off, if I found my partner cheating on me in general, it would be like world shattering, yeah? But if I found my husband or my partner cheating on me with another man, wow, that would fuck your ego right up, wouldn't it? Like you... I know how females work. We would literally think that we've turned <laughs> our partners gay. Not that there's anything wrong with being gay, but like imagine like banging a dude, thinking he's fucking straight, he's been fucking you for so many years, and then he ends up being gay. What a mind fuck. Anyway, she divorces him, she ends up getting like a boob job, and she's living her best. She's like, fuck him. He ends up being an asshole throughout the divorce anyway, which is like, you don't have a right to be an asshole. You cheated on her, bitch. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, she ends up uh, taking her top off one day while she's laying near her pool and then her pool boy comes to clean the pool and finds her topless. And then we go from there. This was a four star read for me. I really fucking enjoyed it. I really am into this whole older woman, younger guy thing. I feel like it's really erotic and it's fucking cool and I like it. I'm down with it. Not saying that I'm going to go date an 18 year old, okay? I'm 25, nearly 26. And even though that's not a big gap anyway, compared to this story, I don't think I could do it in real life. And I'm in a happy relationship. Why are we even discussing this? Then I found this bitch, this book, this book, hun, will change your fucking life. 
I don't care if you don't read fantasy, I don't care if you don't read paranormal, I don't care if you're not into like mystical creatures and shit like this, you need to read Hello Heathens from Nicole Fior Fiorina. I always butcher her last name. This is my favorite book I've ever read. Sorry, I'm playing with my hair. And it's hands down fucking amazing. Now, it is about witches and covens and stuff like that, but don't get it twisted, hun. They are still human. There's no like vampires, beasts. It's humans, okay, that practice Wicca. And I'm here for this shit. Long story short, I love anything witchy poo related. I do my own tarot readings, okay? I'm really connected to that type of bullshit. Love it, okay? Love it. I feel like in a past life, I was casting spells, bitch. I was putting hexes on people. It's about this girl who grows up with her nanny uh, who tells her stories about this town called Weeping Hollow. As a child, she thought this was just like make-believe, but as she grows older, she ends up starting to get these letters from her grandfather who lives in Weeping Hollow. So she goes on this whole like hunt to find the town Weeping Hollow. So it's pretty much this young girl figuring out like her family's history, figuring out who she is. She's in her early 20s. That on its own is amazing. The storyline behind that is incredible. The plot, everything is so good about this book. The world that she set up, like, bitch. I did a whole video about this book, so I'm not going to ramble too much. She ends up capturing the eyes of a man called Julian who wears a mask. He cannot not wear this mask because he's cursed. And they fall in love. But it is, like, epic, man. Like, it is intense. And... It is just such a good dark gothic romance with that whole like enemies to lovers situation, but then it's like sprinkled with Wicca. Stop it, bitch. Stop it. This was like a 10 out of 5 stars for me. Like, why is this not a TV show? If this was a fucking TV show, I would I would have sex with it. Netflix, bitch, you need to pick this up. Like, you need to fucking do this shit. Like, why is no one making this into a fucking series? Not a movie. It needs to be a series. And book two comes out in winter this year. So that's summer for me, but winter for you guys around the world, if you don't live in the, in the. Then I read this bitch. I have been waiting for this fucking book for months. And when it came out, I almost creamed in my pants. What is wrong with me today? I don't know. So this is, oh, I can't say it because it's Latin. Latin is a dead language as it is. But what the fuck does this say? San, San, mm. Santi Diaboli? 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 San, Santi Diaboli? This is book six in the Elite Kings Club series by Ammo Jones. Now, if you want to read this, you need to read all the books. Now... If you haven't read the fucking books, I don't know where you're at. It is amazing. I love this shit. It is so twisted, this series. It's twisted. It's mind-fucking. It's confusing. It's amazing. Okay? Mind you, the first two books are a little messy, but I think that's just because it was released so long ago, and um, as Amro's writing evolves and she grows as an author, each book gets better. Anyway, so this book is about Brantley and Saint. If you've read the other books, you know Brantley is like the devil's child, okay? He is fucking brutal. He's a scary man. Like, he ain't soft, bitch. He is brutal. Anyway, this book is about him and Saint. Saint is living with him and things progress. Saint is very much like a dainty, soft woman. Uh, young girl. She's only 17. And she's quite strange. She's a little bit different. There's something a little bit off about her, but fuck me. These two together, wow. I love this book so much and part two comes out very soon. Amara's in the middle of writing it. I cannot wait. Oh, so good. If you haven't read this series, please fucking read it because this book was amazing. I think this tops the whole series. I think it's one of the best things that Amara's ever written and I'm loving it. I'm loving it and I'm here for it. This was a disappointment. Now, I know some people did enjoy this. Some people didn't enjoy this. The Devil's Night series from Penelope Douglas is one of my favorite ser series I've ever read. I can't speak today. And I postponed the last installment called Nightfall for so long because I just didn't want to say goodbye to the series. So this month, I finally went in there and I finished Nightfall. This was 
so boring. Um, I could not get into this book. I don't know if it's because I left such a gap between the other books to this one or if it was just this story. I was not into Will and Emery. This is really bad compared to the rest of the series and it's really sad because I, I have that series on such a high pedestal, especially for dark romance and it was like some of the first dark romance books that I ever read. So for this to be what it was, Yes, there were some steamy scenes, and yes, you got to see the other characters, but it was huge, and it just, it was so slow, and I just feel like uh, there was no connection with me in this book. So then after I read this, I read the novella, which is the very last thing to do with this series called Fire Night, and again, I just didn't really get what I wanted from it. It was good to see, like, the characters grown up with their children. I feel like Penelope did this to set up another series or another book to do with the children, which, if she does do that in the future, a series about uh, the Devil Knight's character's children, I'd be down for that, because there was a portion in this novella that I was like, ooh, this relationship looks fucking interesting, and especially because they're cousins. Next up, I've got Don't Kiss the Bride by Carrie Ann Cole. Now, this book, hands down, one of the best books I've read this year already. It's going to be in the tops of the year at the end of this year. I already know it. I love Carrie Ann Cole because she writes really easy to consume books. They're usually quite long um, and big books, but they don't feel like it. She penetrates your fucking soul. She shatters your fucking heart. This book is about this girl who is in high school and she comes from a really fucked up family life, okay? Like, really fucked up. You have to read it to understand it. And um, she has car troubles one day when she's trying to leave school. And there's a man that is working on a house across the road. And he comes over to help her. Anyway, uh, they end up kind of forming this friendship. He's in his early 30s and she's 18. And he like helps her out by picking her up and dropping her off places. It's not tacky at all. Now with age gap stories, it's very easy for it to be tacky, you know what I mean? But Carrie Ann Cole does age gaps so well because it's not tacky and she really makes them beautiful, but she also highlights the negative aspects of an age gap relationship. She doesn't sugarcoat shit, you know what I mean? But yeah, she writes really tasteful age gaps and um, if you're someone that's not into age gaps, I would give Carrie Ann Cole's age gaps a go because they're done so well. They're done so well. You can see why these relationships would form and you can see the love between these people. <sighs> Obviously, a lot of stuff happens in this book where, you know, the heroine, she's struggling, she's living in a bad home life. So the hero in this book decides to sweep in and offer her and him to get married so he can help her out. It's not romantic. It's not sexual. He just wants to give her a place to live and also help her out financially, especially with health care because she has some health issues. Now... This is fucked. If you live in a country without healthcare, I don't know how you're living, bitch. I don't know how the fuck you're living. Like, free healthcare? I complain. I complain when I have to pay for shit here. Like, I do. We get the money back because of Medicare anyway. But I'm just like, why the fuck should I have the money to pay for it in the first place? This book really, like, I'm like, how do you live in America without free healthcare? Like, I can't. I can't even deal. I can't even deal. This bitch almost died because she could not afford... The medical procedures and medication that she needed. Anyway, moving on. Uh, and obviously they get married and she moves in with him and it's really like he's feeling things, she's feeling things, but no one really acts on it. He doesn't want to act on it because of the age thing and he kind of like puts her down when she tries to act on it because of her age. Oh, I devoured this up. This was a five star fucking read. Brilliant. Because I read this, I wanted to read more from Carrie Ann Cole. So I started her Ashes and Ambers series. Okay, I need to tell you something. I love 80s rock music, okay? I was raised on it, um, and there's just something about it, dude, that I fucking love so much. And the whole aesthetic of, like, rock stars in the 80s. Like, I wish I was born before the 80s so I could live in the 80s. In Hollywood, bitch. Like, give me a week with these rock stars back in the day when they were young. I wouldn't want to live that life forever. Give me a fucking heroin addict. You know what I mean? Give me a rock star heroin addict. I want to live that life. I want to live that life just for a small period of time and then and then not deal with it. You know what I mean? 
Oh, anyway, I feel like Kerry and Cole, I think she's in her 50s. And I feel like she's got a real thing with like 80s rock stars because the way she explains these men. Anyway, Ashes and Ambers is a companion novel series that contains um, a book about each uh, member of a rock band. Stop it now. So I read, oh my God, what's the first one called? I read Storm, which is about Storm. He is a bass player in Ashes and Ambers. And the way she described him, I just thought of Slash. Um, cause she said he was wearing a top hat. Anyway, I fucking loved this so much. It was so fucking good. Yeah. And I just know Karen Cole, you got the hots for like 80s rock band rock stars. Like I know it because the way you describe them, I'm just like, yeah. Okay. So it's about this girl who's on a road trip thing to like a conference or something for work. And she ends up crashing her car in the middle of the snow. And then she gets rescued by Storm. And he kind of like offers her a ride to his like cabin in the mountains or whatever so she can like shower, sleep, and then try and figure out how she's going to get home. And at first she's like, get away from me, you fucking like killer, thinking that this man's going to do something real fucked up to her. And he's just pissing himself laughing and he's just like, bitch, I'm not going to kill you. I'm trying to help you. They end up getting in the car and driving off to go to his cabin and then he crashes his car and then they're stranded in the snow, in the mountain. So they have to like huddle together and like keep each other warm in this car for a couple of days before like the uh, roads can get cleared so they can drive to the cabin. Now, she has no idea, no idea who this dude is, no idea. And he is loving it. He loves that he's feeling like a normal human. He loves that she is completely and utterly herself around him, not knowing who he is. And oh my God, is this steamy. Oh my God. He's covered in tattoos. He wears like jewelry. He's wearing a fucking top hat. His eyes are rimmed with black coal liner. Stop it. I wanted to jump in this book and eat this man. I was just like, give it to me, baby. Give it to me. Then I read... Vandal by Karen Cole, which is book two, and this is about another member in the band, and this one is super dark, so if you're into dark romances, you're going to fucking love this. Mind you, a lot of these uh, characters in the Ashes and Amber series are all uh, drug addicts or ex-drug addicts. So Vandal is a very troubled man. He grew up in like the foster care system. He didn't have parents that loved him. He was very reckless as a young man and his grandmother found him and told him like, I'm your grandmother. These are your cousins and your brothers. And he ends up finding out he's got this fucking family and he's related to super famous people. And then his brothers and him and his cousins end up forming a band. He is very sad. Like he's a very sad man. He's got a lot of anger issues. He's got a lot of addiction problems, not just like with drugs and like heroin. He has like an addiction to cutting himself. There's a lot of trigger warnings with this book. He has a daughter and his daughter passes away. Unfortunately, it's really sad. Like I was crying, uh, literally crying. And he ends up just going off the fucking rails. He ends up getting fired from the band. They don't want to like have him in the band anymore because he's just fucked. He's just like on heaps of drugs. He's just drunk the whole time. His daughter died in a car accident. He was driving. Someone died in the other car as well, but the wife of the husband in the other car survived. He ends up finding her on social media and like ends up not stalking her, but kind of like following her like story and her grief. And, and he kind of becomes obsessed with the idea of like um, fixing her. Like he is so broken, he caused her to lose the love of her life, so he wants to fix her. If you are someone that is into BDSM, this book is heavy with it, okay? Now, there was some books that I DNF'd, but again, I'm not going to talk about them today. I'll do a video probably next week of my recent DNF'd romances that I've read. Um, and I did start The Boys of Brayshaw Heights and also The Kings of Quarantine. I haven't read enough of them or finished them to mention them in this book. So I'll probably mention them in next month's video. So that's it for my February reading wrap up. If you enjoyed this video, bitch thumbs it up. Helps me out so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world to me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.